This is how to change your battery in a 2014 Porsche 911 Turbo S. Before you do any task, it's always good to check out the manual and see what information they give you because usually there's quite a bit of information. Porsches are designed by engineers that actually know how this stuff works. <laughs> when you read the manual, it does say that the battery is supposed to be changed by a dealer. Not because we're not capable of turning a couple bolts. The biggest thing is because the battery has to be initialized. So from what I'm gathering, the battery charging system is programmed into the computer of this car and it knows how long the battery has been installed and it adjusts the charging patterns according to the age of the battery. I believe this is the original battery. It's a 2014. I bought the car in 2017, I believe, and I haven't changed the battery. So this is probably the original, which means 2023. So the battery is about nine years old and consider I don't drive it every day. That's pretty good. So what I'm going to do is physically change the battery and then I'll have to take it to the dealer because I don't have the electronics to initialize the new battery. So I'll take it to the dealer after that when I take the core back and get it initialized. Yes, you can buy the batteries online for cheaper than what you go to the dealership. I'm in kind of a hurry because I'm supposed to drive to Phoenix Thursday morning. So I needed something quick and I also wanted to make sure that I had a place to take the core back and not get stuck with a dead battery. You would think all the batteries for a 2014 would be the same, but when I called the dealer, they actually had, I think two or if not three different amp hour ratings for batteries. I had to actually give the dealership my VIN number so they could determine that yes, this takes the 95 amp hour capacity battery. So if you're gonna order over the interweb, don't just blindly order a 2014 battery. There are variations. Make sure you get the same capacity as what you've got. The first thing we need to do is open the frunk or bonnet or whatever you want to call it. And that's done with this handy little button down here, which will release the latch. You can also do it from inside the cabin. Just open the door and flip the little switch in the front. And then you come over here and you manually slide to the right, right in the center, pop it up. Now this is a good time to check your struts. I've recently replaced these, so I know they're both solid and it's not gonna fall on my head. With this car, I've already installed a battery tender pair of leads here so that I can keep it on the trickle charger when it's been sitting for a while. At this point, if you have one of them that plugs into the cigarette lighter, now's the time to put that in place. That way, when you remove the battery leads, you don't lose all the programming and settings and everything inside the car. The cigarette lighters are about $200. That's why I just went with one of these pigtails for about 15 bucks. I'm gonna play with it and see if I can't use this somehow to maintain the memory. Otherwise I'll be reprogramming it. So the first thing you wanna do is take this panel off and you can see you've got these two little snapping spots. Lift it up and just slide it out very carefully. Everything you do I'm gonna be very careful. Now this thing here, I have to kind of push back inside since that's my own doing. Okay, now carefully pull it out. Set that off to the side. <gasps> the next thing I'm gonna do is take an old comforter and lay it across everything because I do not want to scratch the paint somehow dropping a wrench or a nut or bolt or anything like that. This car does have the clear film on the, uh, from this point, you can kind of see that seam, but it's got the clear film from there down as well as on the hood. It's got a little protection already, but I just want to be extra careful with this. And there's my lead. You can see that. So I'm going to start getting some tools out. First I'll cut the wire tie right there that held, holds the pigtails onto that bracket. The leads that I put on here for this pigtail are actually under the nut that hold the terminals in place. It's possible I'll be able to loosen this up and actually keep a charge. So I'm going to plug a pigtail into this guy just in case that works. Looks like the first thing that has to come off is this guy right here. 
And this is your tire repair kit. And you can see I've got a couple bolts right there that are torque screws. This looks like that should pop out of there, but here's your little pump kit. Just put that off to the side. You obviously don't want to lose any of the nuts or bolts that come out down inside this cavity. All right, there's one more right there. go there's that lid snaps in there's the third one and this should pop out there we go it's got these snap guys that go down in there too so it's that and the three screws I'm gonna put those off to the side next thing will be to remove this bracket here it's a 13 mil beater on this one do not lose it. Oh, there's another one back there. It's way up there. So you'll have to get the extension one out for that one. Again, be very careful not to drop that nut down here. There we go. There's the bracket. Actually, the first thing you should do is take the terminals off. That looks like a deep well. Loosen this side up first. Get the ground off of there. All right, so I can see it moving already. And I don't want to loosen it too much because I want that ideally to stay in contact. So I'm going to carefully slide the negative terminal up, that off to the side. We'll have to spread this one's legs a little bit here. So we have more room. Now let's get the positive one. Again, I don't want it any looser than what I need to just to get that terminal off. Now, this is going to be a bit of a trick because I want I need to get that out of the way. That's got to stay out of the way. That's got to stay out of the way. You have to get the battery up. Now, I don't want something shorting out my positive terminal here. So I'm going to wrap stuff around it. Now I have to get this thing out of the way. And these things are heavy, very heavy actually. Positives out of the way. What I'm gonna do is I don't really like putting too much weight in here, but I am gonna put a foot in this just to try to use it for leverage. And I'm gonna try to carefully get the battery out around these cables, past the plus, and out of the way. Oh, shoot. Got one more bolt down here, I forgot. This is a little wedge down here that holds the battery in place. Let's try to maneuver this out of here and hope it'll give myself another hernia doing it. Ugh, wasn't so bad. And here goes the new one. Minus plus, everything's the same. They are heavy. This is not something in good conscience I can recommend doing by yourself like this, but if you've done enough bro science over the years at the gym, I guess it's not too bad. I'm gonna do the terminals first, so I've got the positive off. Slide it on in. You wanna make sure it's all the way down to not sitting up. You gotta kind of rotate it out a little bit as you go. I wouldn't use metal to knock it down, but something non-metallic. Basically what I'm doing here is that pigtail is gonna stay laying down as flat as I can make it so it doesn't get pinched or something. And all I've done with these pigtails is just put them under the nut that holds the terminal in place. So that's a real easy thing to do. If you want to save a couple hundred bucks on your trickle charging method. All right. I'll 
do the negative. In theory, this thing should have power. So before I start tightening any other brackets down, what happens if I hit the unlock button? Hey, we got lights. That's good. All right, so let's start getting it solid at least. I'm gonna leave some of this stuff a little bit loose to go to the dealer for the initialization, just because in case they have to get out there to read this QR code or something like that off of it. But I do want the battery to be stable. So I'm gonna get that little bracket that holds it on there. All right. And that bracket actually holds it both back and down. So make sure it's all the way to that corner. Okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put the big bracket across there too, just to keep all that stable. There's a bolt that sticks out from the firewall. So you put the bracket over the hole and then very carefully get that nut started on it. You might have to hold your tongue right on this. There we go, that's a start. Get that one started and then we'll tighten those guys. Be careful when you're using wrenches and messing around under here not to short out the battery with your hand, your watches, your wrenches, anything else that could be bad. Make sure to keep good engagement between the socket and the nut so that you don't accidentally come off and round off the head. That would be bad. Put the second nut down here. Okay, it is solid. Now, like I said, I'm gonna leave this stuff out. I don't want that flopping around, so I'll put, a, put that bolt in place there just so that it's not jumping around on me. Okay. I'm going to unplug this, put the cap over it. I'm just going to tuck this down here for now, again, allowing the dealership all the access they need. All right, now with everything in place, as much open as I can, dealership will open in a few minutes and I'll go ahead and take it in there to have them initialize it and then I'll put all the trim pieces back on. For what it's worth, it does look like it's happy with everything. It kept all my stations, it's still got connection to my phone. So it does seem happy. The only thing that I notice is the time is off, minor detail. But everything else looks good, no warning lights. So I guess having that battery tender charger hooked up does save most of your information. So that's, I wonder if the garage door opener will save. Let's see, will the garage door opener? Yep, yeah, even that saved. It's awesome. Uh, I don't see my thermal camera yet. Now that's interesting. And actually, once it got its GPS signal, it reset the clock. Now it's still an hour off for daylight savings time. I've never figured out why, but it did reset as well. And never forget your wallet when you go to the Porsche dealer. It's not just a joke, it's serious. <laughs> the dealer was able to squeeze me in today, which means that I'll have the car ready in time for the trip on Thursday to Phoenix. So that's the good news. The bad news is they had to charge me an hour of time, which was $225 for initializing that battery. That's one of the key things they do when they change your battery. So big picture, was this actually worth doing myself? It's debatable. It might have saved me a little bit, but probably not a hell of a lot. So anyway, it's what you need to do to make sure the system's charging. I heard horror stories of people saying they didn't do the initialization and their new battery was shot in a few months. So with cars like this, I don't mind turning wrenches myself, but if it comes to taking shortcuts that might affect the longevity or the operability or performance or anything, it's just really not worth it. So now that the car is back and it's initialized and everything's working well in it, now all I gotta do is put the pieces back on. So the first thing I'll do is put the wire ties back on the pigtail. 
Just I'll wrap these around here. A little one around these two since I spread those out. All right, low profile. Now we'll put the tire kit back in place. I'll hang this out here for now. Remember these have the snaps that go down here. It's probably gonna be hard to see with that camera, but those little clips, they have a clip that goes up and over and that goes down over that battery tray. Hopefully you can kind of see those clips down in there. It goes right on the edge of that battery tray. Then just start the threads on each of the three screws. One there, one down here, one up here. Tighten that one first. Since these are pretty straightforward. There's those three, and then the kit. And last but not least is the lid. This. There we go. That's back in place. That's tied in and clear. So I just have to feed that back through the panel, make sure all your tools are out of the way. And I don't have my blanket back in place, so just be very careful not to scratch the paint or anything. And this kind of goes underneath stuff here on top. And what I need to do is poke that pigtail through this gap by just pushing the slats a little bit. There we go. Okay, it's not too much strain or anything. I'm actually missing the little snap that goes from here to here, so I guess I need to get one of those. It's not a huge deal. I still have this one in place, but I do need to get that other snap for this. And then you just put the seal back around it. These cars, you do have to drive them around 100 miles to get a good charge to the battery for whatever reason. So I'm gonna charge it up with a tender, get it green, then take a good 100 mile drive on it and get it really good and charged up. Just took a little over a 100 mile drive. Everything works fine with the charging system, that's good. Unfortunately, the FLIR switcher isn't working. The thing that changes between the stock screen versus the FLIR in front or the backup camera, that switcher isn't working. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be taking this to Phoenix because I don't wanna go on a road trip like that without FLIR. So I'll be taking the CAD since it's FLIR is still works perfectly. So now I'll leave it up to you if you decide you want to change your own battery and go through that. Or because you have to take it in for the initialization anyway, do you just take it in and have them do it? Your choice, just telling you what I found out. Subscribe to my YouTube channel below and let's celebrate turning fuel and air into adrenaline.